And we have returned. Welcome, everybody. We are Westchester Talk Radio. I'm Bob Marone, along with Mike Lakey. We are live at the shop right here in New Rochelle for the sixth annual Stuff the Truck to Benefit Feeding Westchester, a holiday event on every calendar. And uh, it's today. You know, we're giving you the date because we, if you're listening and you happen to shop right today, which is Saturday, December 4th, we want you to come by tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're collecting food and uh. stuffing a truck for the benefit of the needy, and again, feeding Westchester. So tomorrow is Sunday, December 5, here at ShopRite. We will be uh, from 10 to 3 p.m. We're produced this afternoon by Shaw Creative and made possible by Jaguar Land Rover New Rochelle, Land Rover Mount Kisco, Jaguar Land Rover of White Plains, and also, of course, we're here at ShopRite. And, Mike, it's going to be fun if you like cars uh, because we have the general manager of Jaguar Land Rover, New Rochelle, uh, with us. And he is Brian Phillips. Brian, good afternoon. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Uh, doing pretty well. Bring the mic just a little bit closer. Uh, I'm looking at the Land Rover that you brought. Um, but let's first get... If people want to know, inquiring minds want to know. You look at a Jaguar commercial... And I say, I want that car, that car, and that car. And then this is Jaguar. What do we say here at Jaguar Land Rover New Rochelle? The proper way. Which is? Jaguar. Jaguar. Did I say it right? Yeah. I'm supposed to pronounce words for a living, but because (laughs) sometimes they overdo it on TV. Jaguar. Okay. (laughs) They are beautiful automobiles, and they're stylish. And I guess over the last five, ten years, they've really undergone a change from a look that they had for many, many years. A, what drove that? B, how do you feel about the style of the cars today and, and the new SUVs? Yeah, so Jaguar, and I'm in the U.S., so I'm going to say Jaguar. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good enough to say it the British way. Uh, I, I think you are. But. <laughs> so, look, I think Jaguars sort of become that brand that people who have owned Jaguars remember them. Everybody else tends to forget that they exist because... Everybody moved from from cars to SUVs, right? Mm-hmm. So Jaguar went that way, but they were a little slow to react to the market, and they, they made sedans for a couple of extra years, and the demand really shifted. So people sort of stopped buying them. Whoever owned them in the in the past was moving to an SUV, went and bought an SUV because Jaguar didn't have one. Mm-hmm. So then all of a sudden, now they have them. Um, there's a midsize SUV called an F-Pace, and then there's a small one called an E-Pace, but still there's only two in the product line. So... I'm really hoping for more product from Jaguar in the future. Uh, it's the same parent company as Land Rover. So Land Rover, Jaguar is I never basically one that. and the same. Okay. And made off the same, you know, essentially the same lines. Um, and so you see a lot of the same characteristics in Jaguar and Land Rover. And even in the, in the SUV side, Jaguar still tends to be a lot more sporty. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Land Rover has always been an SUV. It's always been rugged. You want to go it, bury a car in the mud? It's, it's been rugged, and, rugged and, and with very clean lines. I've always loved the Land Rovers, always. Yep. So that's so funny you say that. So the, the newest vehicle that they just released after a decade is the new Range Rover Full Size. And that's mm-hmm. the one thing that they focused on was simplicity and clean lines. So it's not yet. I've, I've not even seen one yet. We're getting a demo or a, a prototype this next month, actually. But it's due to release. Um, people who are ordering them now are getting the vehicle hopefully by the end of the first quarter of next year. Yeah, it's tough. Some will be mid-year. But they just released the truck. So the it all just sort of happened. It, actually, the reveal was in New York City. Um, but there are no vehicles on the ground just yet. Now, is it just because I like them, or do I see more and more Land Rovers, particularly up here in Westchester? You see a lot. Yes, There's I do. definitely a lot. Yeah. Um, Westchester County has three locations, mm-hmm. which are all part of our group, mm-hmm. AutoNation. Um, we have New Rochelle, which is our new store, which was in... It, it used to cross between New Rochelle and Larchmont. Yeah, so I know exactly it was, where it is. It used to be Jaguar Land River Larchmont slash New Rochelle. Now it's just Land, Jaguar Land River New Rochelle um, because we moved across town. So we have a brand new facility... Uh, if anybody can find their way to Costco, you can find us because we're yes, right across absolutely. the street. Right it's across not the a street. small location. No, I know, I know where it is. Um, it's in fact, it's a rather large location that you all built yeah, there. Big. Yeah, it's very big. <laughs> it's, it's big now, even for New York. I mean, anywhere it'd be big. Now, I want to go, go back to something you said before because one of the things I I like about the Land Rover, and this is a hard balance to make, and I think you all do it, 
is it has very clean lines and a certain simplicity, yet it's still elegant. It still has an upscale look and feel. That's not easy to do both. That's that. That's why I think that car is so neat. But that, that's my taste. Yeah, but I, I, but I think I think that's right. Yeah. That's that's what people think about it. I mean, it, well, uh, the, and and now uh, you have a car here. We're going to talk about Jaguars proper in a moment. You have a car here, the Land Rover Defender. Again, correct. clean. But this one looks like it could kick some butt. Tell me about <laughs> this car. What am I looking at? So it comes. Remember on your own radio, you got to describe it a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. It's a it's a two door version, so it's a ninety, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a two door version, a ninety, and then there's a one ten. Mm -hmm. The one ten is simply a four door. Um, for, obviously, the four doors sell. We sell quite a few more of the four doors than you the two because they're, you know, you can still use it as a family vehicle, even though it's it's really cool off road. Um, this one was built in the heritage color, so the heritage colors that released in the new Defender. I love that. Um, was basically you had green, blue, and then sort of this off-white color that mm -hmm. was old. And, you know, but so there's a couple of other colors you can get. But the heritage colors to me are the best, uh, at least with these first editions. And this one, we just added a few things. So we added a snorkel. So if you really Tell wanted people to go about deep the snorkel, the because I've you know I've as a news guy, I've covered floods. Some cars make it through, others don't. Right. You mentioned off air that this could have water up to the hood. Why? How can it do that? So the snorkel, the breather. If you see mm -hmm. the breather on the driver's yeah, side, I see the it. snorkel, it's up on the, yeah. the biggest, the cars die in, in the water because they, they the intake gets cut off. Mm -hmm. So these Land Rovers are good up to about three feet of water. They're sealed underneath so mm -hmm. the water doesn't creep into the floorboard. So you can right. actually have water up to mid-level on the door without the breather. The breather... You're gonna float away before you get the car to stall. No, oh. <laughs> that's not bad. You're not gonna, you're not gonna kill it, but you're gonna float away. Okay, that's uh, that's that's really interesting. Now it's got some rugged tires. It has some good clearance at the wheels. This is the one in some in some of the commercials where they're going up hills and stuff and, right. and all of that. Um, uh, folks, I don't even sell these cars, but I could. But things I like, I say I could sell, and I could sell a Land Rover tomorrow. <laughs> Let's talk about the Jaguar. And you mentioned this transition to SUVs. The first few I saw, I said, that's a Jaguar. And, you, and they did capture what you said, even though the ones that aren't out yet, the ones that, I mean, that have already been uh, produced. They have a nice sporty look to them. And then when someone hits the pedal, they growl. I mean, there's, they, uh, those cars are obviously sporty. Just how sporty are they? And what are the appointments? The sportiest version for Jaguar is an SVR, which is special vehicle. All right, so in terms of power, your Jaguar F-Pace SVR, the most powerful one on the road for our brand, uh, is 550 horsepower. 550, 550. horsepower? Right. And that could move Big Michael around. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of energy. Quickly. Quickly. Wow. Around two. So Land Rover has its own version. It's an SVR Range Rover Sport. They're both north of 500 horsepower. One's 550, one's 575. It's the same engine. A um, little bit different tuning, but they're quick. They're, they're fast. They're sports cars basically dolled up as an SUV. Yeah, so you get, you get everything you want in one vehicle. What? Let's get to the heart of the matter, as Don Henley once said. What makes a Jaguar so special? I mean, they have their history. But what about the engineering? What about the product itself? So I think Jaguar has done a great job of staying true to their roots, both in design element and making sure that it never, you never lost the angle that it's a driver's car. Mm -hmm. Certain cars you get in, you're insulated from the road. It's nice and comfortable and cushy. You just don't, you're driving down the road, you get a pothole, you barely know it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, in New York, there's plenty of them, right? Jaguars still are made to be driver's cars. So you're not gonna, you're gonna have a level of insulation and comfort, but you're still gonna feel the road, you're gonna hear the road, and they're just fun to drive. I mean, they have different modes now. I mean, the software's designed to where you put it in sport mode, it'll drive and it'll be tuned completely different than comfort mode. And if you have to drive them in snow and ice, there's a snow and ice mode, and you can put it in that mode and it's barely gonna go. So if you hit the gas, you're not gonna go very fast, but it's designed to keep control. Now, now I'm worried and I wanna remind people who you are. His name is Brian Phillips. He's the general manager of Jaguar Land Rover here in New Rochelle. Uh, we're talking about Land Rovers and Jaguars, obviously. And also let me thank you before we continue uh, for being out here today and sponsoring this event. It's a yeah. wonderful thing to do and, well, and I, it's appreciated. 
I caught wind of this about two months ago and immediately jumped at the opportunity because for me, the brand new store, look, we have, everybody knows that inventory is tight, right? So I don't, mm -hmm. we're selling out till early next year. So it's not really about that for me. It's about making sure we're contributing locally and helping local people in need. Well, well, you've done it Less today. Less about the marketing, but more about the local help. Well, well as you can see, and, and, and we know you're not far from here. Take a ride over to uh, where you go to Costco, folks, and you'll see their beautiful new facility. Uh, before we go, a little bit more about the stand, the four-door. I have noticed some automakers are not losing the zest for that. One I'll mention off air, but it's nice, but yours are beautiful. <laughs> They're still going to talk about you. You're still going to make those, I hope, because I see people going back to them at some point. Not completely, but there's a market for it. Yeah, I mean, you about cars. Yeah, regular yeah, of course cars, not an SUV. Of course we are. It's. They're beautiful. Look, everybody sees the transition to electric, right? So there's all these all these different manufacturers are making a making their attempts to move to electric. Jaguar had one of the first uh, all electric luxury cars, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's heard of our competitor Tesla, Tesla's car, yep. plenty of models. Yeah. Jaguar actually had an iPace that released several years ago that won all sorts of awards. It's more of a luxury variant and it's full electric. So that's what I think if you see, when you see Jaguar come back with many models that are not on the road yet, you're gonna see a lot more electrification of those cars. Um, some hybrid, electric yeah. gas hybrid, and then some full electric. Well, uh, I'm making this prediction. I think you, I think those cars, people still, and if they can afford them, they want an SUV, but they also want a family car. And and some of them are just downright beautiful. Um, and, and the Jaguar is as well. Before we go, everybody's worried about buying a new car. I'm in the market for, I can't even buy a used car. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a guy down the street wants to sell me a wreck. I'm ready to buy it because my car finally died. And, yeah. Um, the best I can do is in the first month of the new year. How long is this chip thing going to continue? Look, I think my crystal ball is not exact like anybody. If they think they know, they don't. You know, I, tip, I tend to think that we're in for another year, maybe 18 months of this. Um, hopefully not as long. Um, but it's a combination of chips, availability, and how these vehicles are changing. Mm -hmm. And I think there, you'll see, you're going to start seeing more and more adaptation of how vehicles are built, less relying on chips, right? So mm -hmm. there has been talk of, of different manufacturers going, producing cars with more analog gauges, like mm -hmm. you used to see, and sure. less of the mm -hmm. digital readouts, because all of those things rely on chips. chips. So you're going to have, all of, everybody's having to adapt. And I think that adaptation process is already going. And so I think you're going to start to see inventory levels really start to correct, hopefully next year. Well, I'd like to so. say it's earlier in the year, but maybe in the third or fourth quarter. Let's let's go hyper-local for, for, for a minute. I was at Costco's a couple of weeks ago, and I looked at your new facility over there to my right when I turned in. It is the biggest auto dealership I've ever seen. <laughs> and one, uh, years ago when I bought a car out in Reedman, Pennsylvania, which is an acre or so. Um, that's huge. Are you getting foot traffic and, and car traffic as a result of where you're located yet? Has that started? Yes, it has. Um, the old location, so the one thing about our, our old location, we were the first Land Rover Jaguar store, Land Rover store in mm -hmm. Westchester County. So the old store in Larchmont uh, was, has been here the longest. So long time transpired before we moved to the new yeah, place. They're just going over there anyway. Right. So tough to park. It's tough to pull out and pull in, yeah. and you're risking life and limb to do that. So the cool thing is, is we finally have plenty of parking. Um, our service facility is four times the size of what it used to be, and so that's the big thing is like for maintenance and for anything that's going on, especially since production on the new car side has dropped, we see more and more people coming in for service that are keeping their cars longer. They're doing more maintenance. They're doing tires, brakes. They're doing all sorts of things. And so we finally have, in my mind, a really, uh, I'd say, not just adequate, but a really a rocking facility that's a, we're able to get people in and out of much, much quicker. Yeah, it looks like it. It's I've got to stop in there. It's a beautiful facility. The cars obviously are what they are. Brian represents them equally well. Brian Phillips, General Manager, Jaguar Land Rover of New Rochelle. Folks, next time you're on your way to Costco or to... Uh, Home Depot. Home, Home Depot. I spend way too much time there. Uh, or Home Depot, or you're getting the cheap gas from Home Depot. Take a look to your right. Check them out. It's probably the nicest facility uh, to 
to look at and buy cars that you've ever seen for a while. I want to thank you very much. And once again, I want to thank you for supporting this wonderful event. Brian, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, folks, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 